God, just run! Run away! Please! It's been a long time, Doctor. Monster is something really special. Let's talk about it. Before understanding anything else, we should probably ask the question, what is Monster? If you're already familiar with it, that's awesome. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that makes sense, considering this isn't one of the most well-known names out there. Monster is a Japanese animated series that aired in the mid-2000s. It follows Dr. Tenma, a neurosurgeon tracking down a serial killer and facing obstacles at every turn. It was adapted from a manga of the same name, created by legendary author Naoki Urasawa. He's known for a lot of incredible stories, but many look at Monster as one of his best works. This anime does the story justice in every way imaginable, keeping a viewer's attention for the suspenseful 74 episode run that aired on TV. Now listen, there's a lot I can say about this show, too much in fact, so instead of just sitting here and going on and on about what makes Monster an incredible series, let's focus in on one of the key elements that Urasawa is best known for, suspense. This is unlike anything you've watched watched before, in that you genuinely feel unsettled about the entire world. Nothing and no one is safe. Things can go wrong at any time, and honestly, suspense is one of the most important factors escalating Monster Up towards a masterpiece. While watching the episodes, there's generally a pattern in where the suspense actually comes from. Creating tension in the environment and constantly keeping viewers guessing is not an easy task, but there's one word that just keeps it going and going pursuit. At many points throughout Monster, the characters we watch are being followed. They're always being tracked down by either another person we see, or some mysterious, unknown group of people. Many characters are put in life or death situations where quick thinking is the only way to escape. But here's the thing, it's not all just action. Take for example one of the very first episodes that establishes the main villain of the series, Johann Liebert. Without spoiling much, he's written in a way that makes him feel human while still doing some really bad things. During his introduction, he comes face to face with protagonist Dr. Tenma, pointing a gun at an innocent hospital patient. The truth is, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Stop it! You can't just go around killing! Why not? On the surface, this entire scene is just a conversation. In terms of action, there's really not much happening. However, questions are going through your head. Who even is this guy? What's his motive for pointing a gun at the poor man's head? Will he end up shooting the patient? Or will Tenma convince him not to? Things may feel slow at a glance, but this confrontation is way more than just two people talking to each other. It's facing off against the unknown, understanding that anything could happen, and no one's life is safe. Another early episode features some minor characters alone without Dr. Tenma around to help them. The situation that led up to this made them assume they were completely safe from harm's way, but then the phone lines are cut. Like before, the viewer starts asking questions. Who cut the phone lines? And how close are they? We do not get an answer, at least right away, as the scene changes to another character in a new place. Everyone is being tracked down. This kind of thing in Monster ensures that you are always on the edge of your seat. Even during the seemingly calm episodes, the series doesn't want want you to get comfortable. At one point, Tenma and Dieter, a kid he saved on his journey, need to hitchhike to their next destination. Tenma is under suspicion of murder, and while the viewer knows he's innocent, not everyone else does. Cops everywhere are trying to find him, his name and picture is everywhere around. When they accept a ride from two strangers, it might just lead to him getting caught. Once again, on the surface this is a simple scene. Our heroes just need to hitchhike from one place to another. Diving deeper into the episode, you have questions. Does this couple know that Tenma is wanted in a series of murders? If they do, will they decide to turn him in? Why do they stop at the police station? In a situation like this, Tenma is in enemy territory. If he were to be found out right here, that would be the end. This overall episode has minimal action, but it still succeeds in chugging along the train of suspense, the train that just won't stop. Soon after this, Tenma is doing some investigating on his own to figure out information surrounding the true killer. He's slowly putting pieces together and coming towards his own version of the truth. But just when things have been going a little too well, the door opens to reveal a mysterious person, and Inspector Lungay steps out from the shadows. Hello, it's been a while. So we finally meet again, Dr. Tenma. 
He's been closely following the case himself and believes that Tenma is the evil mastermind. As per usual, the suspense is built with one character chasing another. With the sudden realization that Lungay has entered the very same building of our main character, there's not a whole lot of methods for escape. The confrontation is exciting, as so much has led up to this point. It's also terrifying, since we've seen before, that Lungay is not playing around. These kinds of moments happen more often throughout Monster than I was expecting. You could get through an episode or two and assume everything was fine, but time and time again, the show still tiptoes into the unknown, hearing a gunshot and not being able to see who actually got shot, listening to the voice of someone in danger without knowing what's happening to them. I could just keep going on with these examples, but I also think you should experience it for yourself too, at least if you haven't already watched. However, if we're talking about what makes Monster a masterclass story of suspense, there's one scene we need to look at. It may not be the number one thing in the entire series, but it includes every little thing I've talked about in this video, and then some more. Meet Julius Reichwein, a psychiatrist for one of the other big characters in the series. Episode 30 is centered all around him. We take a step back from nearly everyone else, and instead just follow this determined man. Not a whole lot was known about him prior to the episode, so it only made sense for a bit of background. He's on a mission of his own for a friend, and he's doing some investigating. Well, if you've learned anything about this series by now, it's that looking for answers might just lead you down a dark path. You'll be followed, and getting too close to the truth means that your life won't be safe. For Dr. Reichwein, he nearly gets pushed onto a train track as the train is on the way. Luckily, he makes it out alive, and then promises to his friend once again that he will find some answers. With his goal clearly known to the viewer, the motivation is set. We become attached to this character. And with that, one of the most suspenseful scenes in the entirety of Monster can begin. It's the end of Dr. Reichwein's workday, and he only has one person left to see before heading home for the night. Ah, uh, good evening, Dr. Reichwein. Mr. Hess. Ah, welcome. It's, uh, nice to meet you. Please, sit down. He meets this mysterious man that we don't see the face of for the longest time. When his identity is revealed, he looks familiar to someone we've seen before. For the purpose of this video, and to avoid spoiling everything for newcomers, what you need to know is that he's a bad guy. His name's Roberto, and he's trained to kill. He also has his target locked right in front of him. The scene continues like a normal session, until Dr. Reichwein realizes that this is no ordinary man. At this point, each character has an objective that that can be described in a single word. For Roberto, kill. And for Dr. Reichwein, escape. The tense music slowly escalates in the background as our hero desperately searches for a way to escape without letting on that he's trying to escape in the first place. By using the excuse that he needs some tea, he stands up and starts walking away. Roberto follows. My secretary's already gone for the day. She has a date. <laughs> Any sudden movements could be catastrophic. Reichwein looks at a door, it's locked. He slowly heads to the kitchen, getting tea ready and thinking about what to do next, while the idea of escape never leaves his mind. The music becomes even more intense, his eyes widening, his glance focused on the door to see if he can get out. Did his secretary forget to lock it like she always does? Or was this the one time she did lock it? Could Dr. Reichwein make it out alive? If you want to make amends towards your wife, You... you need to start talking with her. He charges forward, turns back, and splashes Roberto with a surprise cup of burning tea. The pursuit continues as Roberto pulls out his gun, the scene just keeps getting better and better, and then... well... You're just gonna have to watch Monster and see what happens. But what makes this confrontation so powerful? Why is it one of the best examples of masterful suspense in the series? For one thing, it was the buildup of this character. Like I said earlier, we didn't really know a lot about him, but when something big happened and he made a goal for himself to search for answers, the viewer roots for him. They want to see him achieve that goal. Now that he has a major purpose in the overall story, immediately plunging him into life or death situations is what makes all of this so thrilling. This scene also works because he's heavily limited in what he can actually do. This is a small, closed environment with locked doors and absolutely no one else around. It's a highly experienced hitman versus just a normal psychiatrist. Quick thinking is the only real way to get out, and that's especially shown here. In this shot, Reichwein is pouring a cup of tea to try and act normal. Roberto takes a step closer, and the escape begins. What you'll notice is that this shot intentionally blocks out what's on the kitchen counter. When Dr. Reichwein makes a 
into the door. You assume he's turning the knob to escape. That's the only natural thing to do. But no, he turns around instead, and the hidden weapon of T is revealed. Even in one of the most intense confrontations in Monster, every second that goes by is a second where the unpredictable can happen. The viewer assumes this teacup is left on the counter, and yet we don't see his hands until a few moments later. It's a surprise that challenges the viewer's expectations, and if he tried to turn the knob like normal, he would have gotten shot in the back, and that would be it. All of what I described to you here took place over only a few minutes. It was the action-packed payoff that the entire episode was building up to, and it managed to deliver because of all that setup. This is the essence of why Monster is a master of suspense, slowly but surely setting the stage for what comes next, facing off against the unknown, making quick decisions, and genuinely being unpredictable. Urasawa is never afraid to put his characters in danger, and darkness is always lurking nearby. So that was only a deep dive into a single scene, but I promise you, it is nowhere near the only one. Monster is the kind of series that just keeps going and going with the quality. Some might call it slow at times, but the build-up and suspense cements itself as one of the most well-written Japanese stories in a long time. What I talked about is only scratching the surface, so if it sounds interesting to you, be sure to give the series a watch. Just be warned. It's not for the faint of heart. But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and come up below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.